Infinity changed the name of the G37 Sport Coupe to the Q60. To paraphrase Shakespeare, by any other name, the Q60 would handle as sweet. Let's take a look at the 2014 Infinity Q60. Earlier this year, Infinity announced it was changing the names of all of its cars. This is still the same styling as the G37 Coupe, just has a different badge on the back. So we have these really liquid looking sheet metal fenders on the front. This being the Coupe, the Q60, we don't have any rear doors, we just have the two front doors and we get this really nice roof line design. It really comes back nicely to the uh, rear fenders here. In a lot of ways, the Q60 reminds me of the Nissan 370Z. Both cars share an engine and performance characteristics, but the Q60 is about a foot longer and a lot more comfortable inside. Now let's take a look at the engine. I've seen this engine before. In fact, I've been seeing it since about 2007. That's when the iPhone came out and George Bush was still president. This uh, engine is from Nissan's VQ series. It's a V6. It's got 3.7 liters of displacement. That makes it the VQ 37 VHR. It's got a double overhead cams and variable valve timing. That gets it 330 horsepower, 270 pound-feet of torque. Those are pretty solid numbers from this engine. But what you don't get here is direct injection or turbocharging or anything like that. That's what a lot of other automakers are using to increase efficiency and power. Uh, I expect uh, Infinity will be upgrading this engine sometime in the near future. Well, let's get in the cabin and check the tech. I'm seeing a lot of familiar stuff in this cabin here. Like the engine, this infotainment system here is about five years old. It works well, but it's not the latest cutting edge technology. So we have the seven inch touchscreen here. Then we have this set of buttons and this dial pad here. Why would you have a touchscreen and this kind of dial set up? It's uh, actually pretty cool. So when I have like alphanumeric entry where this dial and buttons would be a little bit tedious and slow to use, I can go straight to the touch screen and start hitting whatever I want. When I have like menu items and things like that and I don't want to really be looking at the screen, then I can twist this dial and move these buttons. It, it's really convenient. And when I go to navigation here, so this is a hard drive system and that means the navigation works pretty fast. There's a full set of maps on here. They do plan view, that's top down, and also perspective view. So I'm looking at perspective view right now, and I get some landmark buildings here. That's kind of neat. It's a nice effect, and I can use that to help me navigate when I see that building in the distance. I know where I am in, in relation to it on the map. When I go to the phone system, I get my phone book, and that's for my paired phone here. I can go straight to a, uh, a dial number pad, and here, so I've got a keypad, and I can actually use the touch screen to enter in numbers really quickly. It's uh, again pretty fast and convenient. I can choose what I want. Uh, I like that quite a bit. When I go to audio, now this is a strange thing. They don't actually have a single audio button up here, which they really should. Instead, I get these AM, FM, these really small buttons here for radio and for stored media. Uh, there's no HD radio on here, by the way. This is an older system. And uh, that's really about it. This car doesn't have too many audio sources. One thing it actually lacks is any sort of online music sources or online search for the uh, navigation system. Again, this is an older system. It's, it's a little bit primitive that way. Music's playing through a Bose audio system here, and I like the sound of the system. It, it's got a lot of good bass, so when I'm playing, you know, my bass-heavy tracks, really thumping music, I can almost feel it coming through the doors and, you know, through my abdomen. It's, uh, it's a nice feeling when you, when you like that kind of thing. On the console here, I have my shifter. That's for a seven-speed automatic transmission. That's standard and really your only choice in this Q60 Coupe Journey model. If you get the Sport model, you get a six-speed manual transmission. Some people might prefer that for more sporty drive, more fun. This one's okay. It's a torque converter transmission, so not as quick to shift as some of them can be. I also, with this transmission, I have these big paddle shifters on the steering column. On a lot of cars, you get the paddles mounted on the steering wheel, so if you turn the wheel, the paddles kind of go with it. Here, you always kind of know where they are in relation to the wheel. You know, it's kind of fun. You can maybe brag to your friends about it. Now, uh, let's take this car on the road. Really good to get behind the wheel of a really performance car. Again, it's been a little while, and I, the feel of this car is great. The whole suspension and steering and all that feels really nice and tight. Also, that uh, VQ engine, it has a really good response. It uh, delivers just really good linear power. And the engine makes a really good sound, too. Even in just normal drive mode on the transmission, and get this nice like roar out of it if I step into it. 
Now the thing about the manual shifting in this car is the shifts are just a little bit slow. I mean, this is a torque converter transmission, so you know there's just a little bit of hesitation. It's not quite as snappy as say with a dual clutch uh, automatic transmission. I think the Sport program actually is a little more satisfying to use if you're really hammering this car through the corners. Now, one thing also interesting here is I believe this is one of the few cars these days you can get with hydraulic power steering. That has a nice heft to it. I mean, the steering has a really nice heft to it, sort of an old school feeling, but it doesn't have that really precision that electric power steering can have and some of the, the better tuned ones do have these days. And that's what they on fuel economy. This car gets 19 miles per gallon city, 27 miles per gallon highway. Those are uh, okay numbers. The 27 is, is really pretty nice. Um, I think realistically, you're probably talking about low 20s. So you sort of have to expect that. This is not a super fuel economy type of car. Okay, base price for 2014 Infiniti Q60 is $40,400. Now in Journey trim, we have the premium package that's $3,250. That brings in the Bose audio system and the sunroof. We also have navigation, $1,850. Now, in Journey Trim, Infinity sort of forces those options on you. You don't really have a choice about those. But we also have the Sport package here. That's $1,950. That's an option. Brings in 19-inch wheels, sport-tuned suspension, and then a limited slip differential. Those are nice things to have. And that's kind of a bargain at that price. We also have the technology package on this car. That's $1,250. That gives us adaptive cruise control and the sort of advanced climate control system Infinity does. Not sure about that last bit, but adaptive cruise control is nice to have. All in, we're at $50,205. Not bad for a sort of an old school, fully loaded sport luxury car.